one. Over 10, 15 people have asked this same question and it goes like, how to remove dependency on tangible reinforcements? What if the child develops a habit for the reinforcement being offered? This has been asked by Sushila, Sushma, Sandhya, Sri Bharani and so many others. Yeah, I think I have already covered this point uh, wherein you can definitely remove dependency on the tangible rewards or anything that the child has been used to as a reinforcer. So basically the trick is that you gradually uh, make the habit of producing reinforce, reinforcement, let's say after two correct behaviors or three correct behaviors and then uh, gradually go ahead along with it, the, the fading part of it. So for the child to be assured, you can use star charts so that the child understands, okay, there is one star I'm receiving, two star I'm receiving, and I am, yes, after three stars, I am going to get a reinforcement. So that is how you can remove the dependency. Good. Interesting. Okay. So the next question is from Ravina. She says that her daughter is nine years old and she wants you to suggest some non-verbal reinforcement ideas for her. Okay. So uh, what's, what's happening over here is that the child is non-verbal and nine years old. So that is an interesting part over here that reinforcement can still be used for older children. But you have to keep in mind the age appropriateness or the social context or the appropriateness part of it. You may not want to put a sticker on a nine-year-old uh, person's child or nine-year-old child's hand. So that may not be appreciated. Instead, probably something that the child really appreciates can be put as a reinforcer, but for which she will have to work for, let's say, tokens of, uh, of a set of 10 or 5, depending on whatever level or, you know, the, 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 the child is able to do. So that is how you can apply reinforcers to even older children and non-older children as well. Okay, great. So uh, I hope that answers your question, Ravina. The next question is from Sakina. Uh, she asked, uh, she wanted to know about application of positive reinforcements for academic improvement. How can we use it? Yeah, so I have deliberately put in a lot of resources uh, in terms of how it can be directly uh, applicable in the classroom settings. Star charts is a very commonly used uh, technique in the classroom setting. Uh, there is also something called as uh, visual schedules. Uh, if there is a, a child with special need in the classroom, visual schedules uh, actually help, help the child to understand uh, how the child should go about in terms of his tasks and completion of the tasks and what he's going to get after that. So visual schedules is something to navigate through the activity towards completion of the task and of the task and the star charts is something that will assure the child when the child what the child will get as an enforcer after he's finishing the task in the classroom. Sure, I hope that helps. Okay, so the next question is from Myla. She says that her son was diagnosed uh, with ADHD. She wants to learn more as to how she can apply positive reinforcements to his condition. Yeah, so uh, particularly an article I have uploaded so that, you know, uh, they can, uh, the parents can go and read about it. But meanwhile, I would like to suggest that children with ADHD and also parents with ADHD benefit so much from positive reinforcement and other behavioral techniques, ABA techniques. Uh, since it is a behavioral uh, manifestation, ADHD is, so uh, when you apply positive reinforcement and, uh, you know, it, it is natural that when the child is very hyper, a lot of stress may appear, yelling and negative part may come. So that is when the, the, child, the negative behaviors get accelerated. So when instead of that, when we apply positive reinforcement, you'll see a drop into your own stress levels as well as the child's stress levels. So yes, positive reinforcement can be applied with ADHD children and in similar ways that I have explained before. Uh, to get more information, probably I can definitely guide on it if uh, more information is needed. Sure. Okay. Now, uh, Barnali Mohan is asking us that how can positive reinforcement help teachers and especially how can it help to manage a child with, you know, temper tantrums? Temper tantrums, yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, times uh, it has been asked that uh, temper tantrums or negative behaviors or challenging behaviors, how positive reinforcements can be applied to it. As I was saying earlier, there is something called the differential reinforcement and other techniques which come under challenging behavior modification, behavior management and modification. 
Uh, but for that, basically, we need to understand why the tantrum is happening. And that is something called as functional behavior analysis. And once we understand how to do that, we'll be able to apply the differential reinforcement techniques effectively and other techniques also. But meanwhile, what you can do is uh, uh, reinforcing every other positive behavior that the child is showing instead of the tantrums. And we can uh, deal with the tantrums once the FPA, the functional analysis is done, and we can help the child to learn positive alternative behavior of communicating or dealing with that particular situation. And that can be reinforced. This is a bit technical, but this falls under a different part called as behavior management and modification. Right. Okay. I hope that helps and that uh, answers your question. So, this one is really an interesting one. The next one from Ma Luisa. She asked that uh, she's actually saying reward is a form of reinforcement, just like tokens used in ABA. So how would we manage learners who are dependent on rewards? Sometimes they tend to rush their tasks just to be able to get the particular reward. Yeah, now over here, in terms of producing reinforcements, you are in, the, you are in control of it. So basically, it's up to you that how the child's uh, task performance has been. And as I said, only after correct behavior, only after correct response, uh, uh, you know, you are supposed to give the reinforcements. So that is up to really, uh, really up to you. If, if you feel that the child is lagging behind in terms of efforts or probably is not being able to do uh, the task uh, or finish the task, you may uh, provide prompts and other techniques uh, in order to, uh, you know, make the, the task, uh, you know, in a successful completion of the task. So that way you can actually deal with this. Got it. Okay. So the next question is from Anisa Sumarni. She is asking if you could elaborate a bit more on negative reinforcement and is it okay to give the negative instead of the positive one? Yeah, as I already said that negative does not mean the quality uh, as such over here. Negative is basically to be remembered as a mathematical term of removing something uh, which is unpleasant, let's say, from the environment. Uh, so uh, th there was another picture uh, wherein the child was actually looking at the sun rays like this. So what happens in, in that picture is that uh, probably there is too much light and the child is sensitive to light. And if, uh, you know, through, uh, you know, appropriate ways of communication, the child probably gives an, gives an indication to turn the light off or dim the light. So that is something that is taken as the correct response and the light is removed. So that is negative reinforcement. The, the, the removal of the light is the negative reinforcement. So negative does not mean negative in terms of uh, the quality of the word or the attribute. It's basically a removal of something that is um, causing you know, distress to the child or probably removal of an item so that a particular desired behavior goes up. That's it. Wow, that is an interesting piece of information there. Okay. So let's talk about the next and dear audience, I know that all of you has, have sent us a lot of questions because of shortage of time. We might not be able to take all those questions, but we promise you that we'll be answering each one of your questions via email. So yeah, keep an eye on your inbox and you will find your answers there soon. I'll be taking the last two questions for the day. So the last second one is uh, by Anis Sumarni. He is asking how often we should do the reinforce, uh, reinforcer assessment. How often we should do the reinforcer assessment. As I said that if you feel that a particular reinforcement or the particular item that you have decided, uh, which may be working previously but not working right now, that is the time probably is the, you know, is something when you want to check on it. So you may want to bring in another reinforcement, another activity, and it is always better to use multiple reinforcements than just one more of it. So use a lot of it. Uh, sometimes use activities, sometimes use tangible, sometimes use toys, sometimes use food. So all these things can be, you know, uh, brought into uh, the picture so that, you know, the child doesn't get bored uh, of the whole thing. Sure. Thanks. Okay. So I'll take the last question for the day from Aditi. She has a very interesting situation. She says, if an ASD child is singing in the whole class, even after a positive reinforcement is given, the child is given enough time to sing as well. Then how to make that particular child improve on this singing oh. habit? In this singing habit, in the classroom. Yeah. Okay. Now this again falls under behavior modification. 
there may, there may be multiple functions of that behavior uh, which is like the, the singing behavior so again singing behavior is continued because it is reinforcing the child okay it is pleasurable for the child and we may want to find out other uh, equally uh, pleasurable or equally interesting activities that can take place of the singing probably the singing might be happening because of uh, because of a reason that she wants to communicate something but she is not able to and that is her way singing is her way probably to tell you that i am overwhelmed or i am not be able to actually handle this noise that is happening in the classroom because many times uh, children with asd do that so that is their way of coping with the stress and that is their way to tell about you know not exactly tell as such but this is their way of communicating that this is something as as an indication to us to understand that when the child is in, engaging into a self stimulatory behavior which is called as the singing to self when it, you know even though there is many other things going on so when the self stimulatory behaviors occur that is basically the sign of uh, the child becoming overwhelmed or the child has uh, you know a uh, child has become distressed and that is something that you may want to check on it uh, so you need to check that whether the child is getting uh, you know distressed or overloaded with sound or noise or many other things probably instructions maybe the child doesn't want to do a particular task and that is why she is running off singing so you will really have to this falls under functional behavior analysis this falls under uh, challenging behavior management this falls under behavior man management and modification which is a very uh, crucial uh, part of asd and special needs children so and once the child once we understand the function behind the singing behavior there may be multiple as well and we uh, then decide what alternative behavior you want so for example if let's assume that this behavior is happening because the child is getting getting overloaded with the noise that is there in the classroom so you know when the child is singing around she is suffering from the noise levels so that is the time probably you want to put in earplugs so you want to teach the child to come to the teacher and ask for earplugs or the headphones whatever noise cancelling headphones so once the child is taught to come and ask for the headphones noise cancelling headphones that is the right behavior and now this behavior needs to be reinforced okay this is very apply positive reinforcement every time the child gets a you know overwhelmed with the noises she comes to you she asks for the uh, headphones either by a picture or pointing or actually verbally and that is when you highly highly reinforce the behavior and that is what that is how you will probably see a difference that after wearing the noise cancelling headphones probably she will stop